Hi, my name is Johan Jomok Tekel and today we want to answer a question of a student. So this is basically the exercise we're talking about. We're in place in shells here. This is the exercise where the clamp support there. Here's the axis of the revolution. And um, it was given in the solution of that exercise that V, the membrane force over here, V that I marked in red, as the value one half of a times pi where pi is the value of the inner pressure and the student was basically asking where is that value coming from and that's the question we want to answer here very briefly very shortly so let's look at the sphere that half sphere it will basically look like this this was our axis of revolution, so in 3D is actually a half of a sphere, as I said. Okay, and that force V we're talking about is actually a line load applied all over the perimeter of the circular cross section that we can see here. That's basically V. Ah, I drew it upward, but yeah, whatever. Let's put it, let's call it V for, for now. It's actually downward. Or we can call it minus V if you want. Um, and then we have our pressure P, the inner pressure that's applied on it. I'm just gonna draw it like this. But it's not only on the circumferential line here it's like on the wall surface so that inner pressure is not a line load it's like an area load it's not just here on that line it's on here too oops area load that's p okay and that's, I'm going to call this minus V because I didn't draw it in the right direction, as, as you have done. I mean, I didn't respect what I drew there. That's why I'm going to call it minus V. So how do we get to the value of P? If we draw that circle, let's, let's say we, we just draw level, like a part of this sphere. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be something like this. And our pressure is acting always perpendicular to the surface. Always perpendicular to the surface. It should actually ring a bell already. So if I just take an infinite element there, let's take, let's say I just take this part here. I'm gonna zoom it out here. I have that line, it's inclined and I have P on it, that's P, the area load, but yeah, I could call it GP if you want, because it would actually still need to be multiplied by the surface and, and stuff, but we're going to see, we're going to see where I want to come here, and what do I need? I want to know the components of GP in the vertical direction, so I can just decompose this force in its component. So we're going to have an horizontal component here and a vertical one here. Mm? That's just like a decomposition of this force in its components. Mm? You can do it with the use of a parallelogram or a rectangle. Okay. Now we just need an angle there. What am I going to do? Let's use and you can use an angle Let's say this angle is even, maybe alpha. Okay, we could basically use it to have the different components of dp um, over um, this the surface here. I mean, this component then when alpha is there, let's say um, no, I should actually define alpha with this position here. Or I could call it alpha p for the position where we are. So that would be alpha p with the horizontal 
and I could find out the same angle alpha P in here. Mm, so that part of GP that acts in the vertical direction would actually be GP times sinus from that alpha in this case. Okay, because it's the same alpha here, it's the um, opposite side kind of. So dp times sinus of alpha p is the vertical component that we get here. But now I want to do a specific analogy. I mean, we could still do this, but an integration will be required because we have like a wall surface to, to deal with, okay? And we don't want to do that. We want to use some information we have already. We know the following from a from a structural analysis, okay, from a beam. When we have an inclined load, on an inclined beam, if that load is perpendicular to the beam, okay, let's say I have some dimensions here, L, H for horizontal, and L, H, um, L, V for vertical, okay, so this load that's acting perpendicular to the beam is the same if we have a value Q here for this load is the that system this distribution is exactly the same as having that same inclined beam with a load that has the same value acting vertically on the area LH I mean with the length LH here the same value of Q and the same line load acting horizontally so basically it has the same value and it's acting directly in its different direction without even taking the inclined beam into consideration kind of mm -hmm. with the same value q over the height l v and we're gonna use the same principle here so we're not gonna go through that decomposition of the loads and integration and stuff no we're not gonna do that we're gonna say what's happening here or what's happening on this system is the same as same with the analogy of the beam with the beam analogy kind of I'm gonna say it's the same as just having our sphere there or at least half of it and just having the load that's applied vertically on it okay this is how it will look like I need to put my symmetry axis we see need to rotate the whole thing mm -hmm and our forces V are here. And this is P. Um, let me just write it in black. See? So we can just do this. Now what happens with the horizontal component? Of course we could do exactly the same and say it's going to be the same as having the horizontal component like this to and there and you can see already that it cancel out mm, both horizontal components here we just cancel out especially since we have a an axis of rotation so the whole thing is going to be like a compressive all, all around um, I mean, um, we could we could still we could still um, um, put it if you want, but yeah. So um, anyway, the the question here was um, about the vertical, um, the the vertical force. So we just we we just need to basically just need to consider this. Hmm? We're not interested about what happens in the horizontal direction if it cancel out or not. Actually, um, just in the vertical direction. So, um, how does it look again? Let's do it in 3G now. Let's draw the same thing in 3G. 
it comes back to what? It's equivalent to equivalent to at least for the vertical direction. I'm drawing my sphere again. At least half of it. I'm drawing the vertical load P as we drew it here, but now in 3G, so it's basically it's like a cylindrical load. <laughs> I mean, a cylindrically shaped load that acts vertically. Hmm? There's an axis of rotation there. Don't forget it. look like this kind of so it's basically going to be applied on this base surface that's the important point here and that's it's basically the base surface here we need to consider for p and our line load yeah we knew it already is actually directed inward uh, i drew it a little bit and not that it's wrong i just didn't do it like I just didn't undraw it exactly as, as it was meant to be in the exercise or in the correction or whatever. Mm, that's the V load you're looking for. Now, if we look at the force that comes from V, let's call the resultant of V like a vertical force. The vertical force F goes by V. I put it like this in brackets because both of them are not acting at the same time. This is like a resultant from this V force. What is it going to be? V is a line load. So it's just like the perimeter times V. And V is a line load. It has the unit force per length. Force per length. Um, P is like an area load, as I said earlier, it has the unit force per area. Force per area. So, if we do, um, if we compute this resultant of the V force, it's going to be FV equals the perimeter is 2 pi, 2 pi times the radius, the radius is A, 2 pi A, that's the perimeter, times the value of V, that's our line load, okay, and now if we talk about the result coming from P, I can draw it like this, like, it's a result, I would call it F, P, in brackets too because it doesn't act at the same time as the as the um, area load so we either have the area load or this resultant and that they're not acting both at the same time f p is what as we said this force here is only gonna act on the horizontal plane basically as we saw here for an incline load it just acts for the horizontal component it just acts with this um, length lv and the vertical component just as with the length L LH. That's how we, we found. Huh? And we proved this already in other videos. Um, look at videos like Tov, Shachi, Kun, Agun, stuff like that. Explain that already. Mm, I want to keep it short here. That's why I, I won't explain this anymore. Mm? And we don't need to go through integration and stuff. Um, so what do we get? The area, the, the base area of our circle is pi times the radius squared so pi times a squared multiply with p the value of our area um, load okay the inner pressure basically in our case yeah now we force equilibrium some of the forces or some of the external forces acting on the half sphere and that's our system here should be equal to zero 
I will do it in the vertical direction directly. So the force in the vertical direction should be equal to zero. We get minus SV plus FP equals zero. Let's call this equation one. Equation one is equivalent to FV equals FP and fv is what 2 pi a times v 2 pi a times v and fp is pi a squared pi a squared times p so what is v v is equal to pi a squared times p divided by 2 pi a. So we can cross this a here out with one of the two a's over there. A squared is like a times a, and we can cross one of them out. It's just gonna be one a that's remaining up there. We can cross pi here with the pi up there. Okay, and what do we get? One half. A is A times P as expected. The P here, the whole time was actually called PI, like inner pressure. I can correct that and put PI, PI, PI over here, and PI here. So that's how we get to that value. V equals one half. A times pi and the the units matches too because a has what the unit length hmm? a here is a length for example meter and here's gonna be meter times meter times um force over a here hmm? so it's gonna be force over length the final unit so that's it Thank you for your attention and see you next time.